Good morning, friends. Memories of Rosa and Rita May. Rosa, of the thick curly hair, the color of dark chocolate and dimples that could get her anything she desired. She showed them freely, always the first to laugh. The laughter of Rosa was contagious. You could not stay in a bad mood. If she would just point those dimples in your direction. Skin the color of caramel and eyes that were laughing and always full of mischief. She made it endurable to live in a halfway house, learning to be clean and sober, sharing bedrooms, four women to a room. Sometimes there were bed bugs. They were, we were told that we were free to leave if we didn't like the conditions. What we were running from was much worse than bed bugs. Rosa got clean. I watched her blossom into courage and begin to have hope for a future, one without drugs, abuse, and bed bugs. She went back to Mexico to get her little boy and start her new life. Her husband murdered her. My necklace has one less pearl. Rita May loved yellow. She had a cleft lip. She was Native American adopted by German Americans. She felt abandoned by her parents, who kept her siblings and gave her up for adoption. Rita May's laughter was loud, jarring, and genuine. Rita May was stuck in a revolving door of rehabs. She filled shampoo bottles with vodka when she checked in and could not stay sober. I think she was afraid of what comes after rehab. We all were. She was my partner on the night shift crew, the night shift floor cleaning crew that made the rehab money. We were not charged to live there, but we were expected to do hard labor on a daily basis to bring money into the ministry. The pastor drove an expensive truck, and his family all had iPhones. We were not allowed to have phones, and we were paid $20 per week for our sometimes 60 hours of work. Most of us were enrolled in school trying to earn our AA degrees on the side. The pastor took two-thirds of our financial aid from school. He said he was saving it for us, but we never saw it again. Rita May loved everyone, got along with everyone. There was no one she couldn't make laugh. She was a hard worker. There was always Mountain Dew in her big gulp cup. I left rehab after four years of being told by the pastor that I wasn't ready to go, that I wouldn't make it out on my own, and that God would tell him when it was time for me to move on. He said we could not leave without his blessing. I began to think it would never come. Rita May never left. I saved up my dollars and got accepted into a bachelor's program in La Mirada, California. I bought a stick shift Nissan Sentra with the money I had been tucking away and moved away without the pastor's blessing. I lost touch with Rita May. I was informed later on that she rented a hotel room on a weekend pass from rehab, relapsed on alcohol, and died alone in her room. Another pearl gone from my necklace.